Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today, once again, we're going to discuss some of the new studies about our friend Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Nope, still hasn't appeared. Anyway, so yeah, that super giant star that surprised everyone back in 2019 when it decided to suddenly start dimming by quite a lot. And this lasted for several months, eventually becoming known as the Great Dimming Event. And even though additional observations have now concluded that it's extremely unlikely that this was signs of some kind of an upcoming supernova and was most likely the result of some kind of a dust cloud emitted by the star, because a lot of the details are still murky and because there have been several other studies in the last three years discussing additional propositions, we're essentially stuck with a bit of a mystery. Why exactly did this happen? And just recently, like a few days ago, there's been another study, another super interesting and very intriguing proposition that, in essence, suggests that Betelgeuse may not be just a single star and potentially does have a partner that we just cannot see. And if correct, this would actually change quite a lot about Betelgeuse, but would also explain so many things we've observed in the last few decades. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but let's also briefly discuss some of the recent propositions that have not been proven yet but do present us with a somewhat intriguing scenario. For example, in one of the previous videos, with the links for these videos in the description below, researchers essentially try to figure out is Betelgeuse going to go supernova soon or is it possibly not going to go supernova for a very long time. And surprisingly, there were actually so many different, very solid explanations that all produced pretty much opposite results. For example, some studies suggested that this star was a result of a collision of two separate stars, which would explain why it's spinning so fast and may actually stay the same and not change much for a very, very long time, much, much longer than we initially thought. Whereas other studies ended up with opposite conclusions. One of the most recent studies actually suggested that it might even go supernova within the next few decades, maximum several hundred years. And this is actually based on something entirely different. So, as some of you may know, Betelgeuse, that you can kind of see right here in the infrared, like so many other stars, is a variable star. In other words, it does not have a constant brightness. And you can actually see this pretty easily by looking at freely available graph of its light curves that shows us how the brightness changes over a period of approximately six years. And that big dip in the middle, that's the great dimming. But you can see that even before the great dimming, it was actually going brighter and darker at least several times per year. And so these unusual cycles, even though they're not perfectly understood, can generally be predicted pretty well. But in the last few years, scientists realized something else. By looking at a much longer term, we can actually see another unusual pattern. Another cycle that's approximately 2100 days long, that's known as an LSP, a long secondary period. And today we know that quite a lot of giant stars seem to possess these LSPs in general. These are usually seen in many cool, very bright stars, such as red giant branch stars or RGBs, yellow hypergiants and red supergiants, with many of them possessing cycles of anything from hundreds to sometimes thousands of days long, with approximately 30% of all large stars possessing these cycles. You can find out about all of this in one of the older papers that should be in the description. And today we believe that a lot of these cycles seem to suggest something extremely unusual about these stars, but the exact explanation is still not certain. What is certain though is that they do seem to end up in very unusual asymmetric planetary nebula or supernova that are basically bilobal. And so in many of these stars, for some reason, they seem to contain that secondary pulsation that's usually approximately 10 times longer than the primary pulsation. Yet these LSPs or long secondary periods present us with a bit of a mystery. And the mystery here is that which of these cycles is really the primary cycle? Because that's actually really important. We know that as a lot of these stars become older and basically come closer to that transition to the supernova or some kind of a planetary nebula, their cycles usually grow longer and longer. And so knowing how long the actual primary cycle is, is super important, at least if you want to figure out what's going to happen to the star and when. And so for Betelgeuse, trying to understand what the primary cycle is, is obviously kind of important. Because if that primary cycle turns out to be that longer cycle that's about 2100 days long, it would actually suggest that Betelgeuse is much, much older and based on the calculations for this LSP, researchers believe it might only have a few decades or maybe a couple of centuries left 
before it actually does go supernova, producing a really bright event, almost as bright as the full moon. And so in the last few years, the big question became, is that 2100 day cycle its fundamental mode? Is this the main variability cycle, suggesting that the star is much older? Because this would actually place the evolution of Betelgeuse beyond the onset of the carbon burning and implying that the supernova might be imminent. But if this is a secondary period, then it's still very likely is burning helium and is thus unlikely to go supernova for several hundred thousand years, possibly even up to a million years. And so just to give you a super brief summary, here we had two propositions. One is that the primary node or the brightness variation was approximately 420 days long, suggesting Betelgeuse will probably survive for hundreds of thousands of years. And the second proposition was that the cycle was 2100 days, suggesting that Betelgeuse only had like a few decades left. With this proposition obviously being more exciting, just for the sakes of science and I guess um, fireworks, uh, this one maybe not so exciting, but also a lot more likely. And so as a result, a lot of recent studies essentially focused on that main question. And so the most recent study potentially discovered one of the best explanations we have so far. Here, Jared Goldberg, Meredith Joyce, and Laszlo Molnar propose a body for Betelgeuse. Maybe there's actually a hidden partner that explains the secondary cycle and actually explains the great demon as well, potentially covering all of the mysteries all at once, with the actual proposition being relatively simple. Betelgeuse might have a much smaller partner, maybe just a little bit more massive than our own sun, that seems to orbit around it every 2100 days, in the process producing all sorts of effects. For example, the brightness variation involves a somewhat complex formation and removal of dust, usually along the line of sight from planet Earth. And once in a while, when this dust becomes clumped in certain ways, it might actually end up in one of the Lagrange points and gets expelled in such a way that it produces a much bigger dimming event, which is what they believe might have happened in 2019. Because according to their model, that event happened during the so-called LSP minimum, which is essentially when this partner, hypothetical partner, would be kind of pointing in the direction of planet Earth. But if this is so, why is it that we're actually not seeing anything? And where exactly is this star hiding? Well, the explanation to this is relatively simple as well. Betelgeuse is ridiculously bright. It's about 10,000 times brighter than the sun. And so if the star here orbits with a period of 2100 days, it's actually just close enough to Betelgeuse where it's going to be practically invisible in most frequencies of light. And that's because this star would be very similar in brightness to our sun, right next to an object that's about 10,000 times brighter. And so the only way we could ever see this is by maybe observing various changes in dust and radial velocity for at least several decades. Which could then maybe show us that the dust here moves in a very specific way, circling around as if something is orbiting around the star. And so basically detecting the star, if it's just a regular star, would be very, very challenging. But if it's a white dwarf, or if it's maybe a neutron star, which is somewhat unlikely, but I guess could exist, we might be able to see certain variations in the X-rays, which as far as I know, have not been detected yet. But assuming the age of Betelgeuse at 10 million years, and assuming two stars here formed at the same time, we can basically make some estimates about what's going on. So obviously the radius and mass of Betelgeuse don't really change much, but it now has a partner known as Orionis B, that's just a little bit more massive than the Sun, and is approximately 1850 radii of the Sun away from the center. So I guess it would be just a little bit farther away from the edge of Betelgeuse, not really touching it, but extremely close. This would be approximately 8.6 astronomical units away from the center. And if this hypothesis is correct, this could be some kind of a low-mass pre-main sequence star that's still developing and potentially even has some kind of a protoplanetary disk. And obviously the disk here would be very likely extremely disturbed. It's the interaction between the disk and the dust from Betelgeuse that could possibly lead us to one day discover it. And so interestingly enough, right now this is the best explanation we have for this unusual 2100 day periodicity. Even though there are other explanations like for example, giant cell convections, mode interactions, non-radial pulsations, or even unusual dust modulation, it's really the partner that seems to easily explain everything we've seen so far in the last five years pretty well. And obviously, if correct, it would also suggest that Betelgeuse, as mentioned before, is unlikely to go supernova anytime soon. It probably has at least a few hundred thousand years left and may even survive longer depending on what happens with the partner. But once it does go supernova, 
it's probably going to be very unique and produce an extremely unusual remnant, while also dramatically changing its partner, potentially turning it into a slightly different star. But obviously, for now at least, this is just a hypothesis and definitely needs a lot more evidence. And once someone does discover some evidence, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out other videos on Beetlejuice in some of the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.